Microsoft Flight Simulator offers something most games or simulators cannot, a sense of limitless adventure. But as with aviation in real life, it can be overwhelming and frankly, bloody confusing. In today's video, I'll be sharing some hopefully helpful information about Microsoft Flight Sim to help you get the most of it, to push your sim to the limit and hopefully make it as realistic as possible. Whether you're new to the sim or a flight sim veteran on PC or on Xbox, there is something for everyone today, so let us get into this ultimate Microsoft Flight Sim Realism Guide. Now, a lot of the information in this video may be common knowledge to some of you, so feel free to skip via the clickable chapters down below. On that note, let's kick off with aircraft. Now, this is probably the single biggest factor that will impact how realistic your sim feels. Flying around with most default Asobo aircraft leaves a lot to be desired. Many of these aircraft, while visually nice, lack system depth, and once you've picked up the basics of flight, you'll be crying for a lot more. Luckily, there is plenty to choose from. From the freeware Innybuilds A310, available on all Float Sim platforms, to the wonderful Payware 737 by PMDG and the BAE 146 by Just Flight, with these two airliners both being available on both PC and Xbox. Now, PC pilots luck out with the freeware airliner add ons from the famous fly by wire A320 Neo to the headwind A330 Neo, as well as the most realistic aircraft on the sim at the moment, the Phoenix A320, which costs around. 50 UK pounds. All of these aircraft I have listed are not the only ones you should look out for, with plenty of superb general aviation and bizjet aircraft available as well. If you can pick one of these aircraft and stick with it, learn the systems and get a true feeling for flight, not only will you get immense satisfaction from it, but your sim will feel exactly like that, like a simulator and not like an arcade game. Although of course there's nothing wrong with that and if you like flying, Microsoft Flight Sim because it feels like an arcade game, then I'm all for it. Now, credit where credit is due. Asobo are currently overhauling many of their aircraft in collaboration with other developers, with their aircraft avionics updates. For example, at the moment, the 747 and the 787 are currently undergoing a makeover. And with the beta, I have to say already, they are brilliant, so much more true to real life. So do check that out. I have already made a pretty extensive video on it and this beta is available on both PC and Xbox and it makes these aircraft both the 787 and 747 incredibly fun to fly. So once you've picked your aircraft and you're satisfied that it provides a nice challenge, what about the world around you? Well in fairness, MSFS doesn't need that much help in terms of looking realistic. It already does a superb job at it but there are a few things you can do. If you're on PC, then without hesitation, go ahead and download the free regions of We Love VFR by Puff and Flight. This will go ahead and fill your world with more authentic local landmarks, from chimney stacks to power stations, oil refineries to antennas and so much more, using real world public data. Puff and Flight have been busy at work and as I said, there is now worldwide coverage. So wherever in the world you are, there is no excuses. It is free and not too greedy on storage and it will instantly uplift your landscapes. Perfect for VFR flying. Now, regardless of whatever platform you're on, ensure you make full use of the freeware world updates, which adds points of interests, overhauls local airports, and sorts out terrain in selected regions. Now, I should say, some world updates are better than others, and do watch out as they can be demanding in terms of file size. But if you fly often in any area Asobo have covered with their world updates, it really is a no-brainer, and if there's an area that hasn't been covered by a Sobo yet, just wait because they are very frequent 
with these updates. It is a no-brainer. Make full use of the world updates. Back to PC with a payware add-on, Ground Services X by FS Dream Team. If you fly any sort of airliner, you must try this out. It costs around 31 UK pounds, but for that money, every single major airport receives a jetway overhaul of some sort, and of course, a full replacement of ground services to better match real life. Adding everything from gate gourmet catering trucks to airline baggage carts to passengers walking around towards your aircraft, hopefully nowhere near the engines. It didn't have the best start, but now all the bugs have been, or most of the bugs have been ironed out, and in my opinion, it is a must-have. It's not cheap, but it is worth it. Now moving on, default airports are acceptable, but more often than not, they seem to all look a bit cartoonish and seem to be in a lifelong stable marriage with concrete. So be sure you have a good look around for airport add-ons, both freeware or payware. Now on flightsim.to, which is the go-to add-on website, they have an interactive map showing all of the website's add-ons in their location on the world map so if you fly on PC that is a very handy tool now in my opinion there's one thing that does not need to be improved by anything external in Microsoft Flight Sim and that is the weather engine I would recommend first off to set in your clouds to the ultra setting if you can I will be touching on settings in a moment but please don't feel like you need to pay for an external weather engine Injector. They made sense when the sim was first released and live weather wasn't great, but since then, Asobo have done a pretty good job at updating live weather, and now I have to say clouds are pretty much near to perfect. At times a bit pixely, but that's never sorted out by an external weather injector, and seen as quite a few of them are very expensive, keep your money in your pocket, there is no need to do anything but use the default here. Now while this is not a settings guide, I will briefly touch on a few pointers when it comes to them. This isn't a settings guide because it is ridiculously difficult to create one that will help every single person set up and suit their flying style and indeed location. There are a few universal comments I can make to make your sim look more realistic and hopefully help with performance as well. For example, as I said, prioritise your settings to allow for ultra clouds. It is worth it, trust me. To do this, you can deprioritise water waves or grass and bushes to allow for some wiggle room here because more often than not, you're not flying right down near the waves nor are you flying right down near some grass unless, of course, you're a bush pilot. In addition, while incredibly demanding on your system, prioritising a higher quality of shadows will result in a noticeable uptick in how realistic your Microsoft Flight Sim world looks. Aircraft will look more shiny and the world will sort of feel like it's more blended into one as opposed uh, to separate objects. Now, if you are suffering from severe blurry screens inside the cockpit, which is definitely an immersion breaker, you may want to change your anti-aliasing settings from DLSS to TAA, Temporal Anti-Aliasing. Now while we're here talking about settings, let me briefly touch on NVIDIA's game filter. Now while I personally don't use this, I find my flying changes too much to find a filter that improves the sim on a whole. I do understand that it is an incredibly powerful tool and can be used to boost the visual realism of your simulator if you use it correctly. I have attached a form post down below where many flight simmers on the flight sim, uh, flightsimulator.com forum discuss their experiences and what filters they use. I find in my opinion it's more hassle than it's worth but you of course may disagree and of course this one is PC only. Now moving on to AI traffic, there is absolutely nothing like flying into an airport in Microsoft Flight Sim with some company airliners at the gate ready to pull up next to or some aircraft to dodge in the sky upon departure. PC users, 
For freeware, I would recommend without a doubt FS LTL, and for payware, I would recommend Just Flight's FS Traffic. At the moment, FS LTL is where it's at. They've recently added general aviation traffic, making our skies feel more alive. I have reduced in-depth videos on both of these add-ons. Links down below. You will definitely experience a performance hit, but all is worth it in moderation. At the moment, sadly, both of these add-ons are PC only, but Class Flight are moving FS traffic over to Xbox as well, I believe. ATT Foxtrot Hotel, turn right, heading TT zero degrees. Now, how about some live ATC? Well, VATSIM or IVAO have you covered? And trust me, I need to do more of these because it is an absolute blast. Whether you're flying VFR, Visual Flight Rules, or IFR, Instrument Flight Rules, one of these. Both of these online networks, I should say, will mean you encounter professional air traffic control, which, even for me, can be quite daunting, but the vast majority of this community is very helpful, and before long you'll find yourself being vectored onto the ILS into some of the sim's busiest airports, surrounded by fellow pilots aiming for a high level of realism. At the moment, this is PC only, and if you've done everything else well, VATSIM or IVAO is really the final step to achieving a simulator that feels as close to real life apart from hopping in a Class D uh, FAA approved sim as possible. They are really a godsend when it comes to boosting immersion. Now while we're on this subject, if you want to fly in a manner that is realistic to real life, you have to fly to a flight plan which is realistic. And Navigraph is there for exactly that. Providing the most up-to-date navigation data, Navigraph provides a holistic system to flight planning in Microsoft Flight Sim. From creating the route to giving you the vital charts you need for your SIDS and STARS. While it is PC orientated at the moment, Xbox developers can add Navigraph integration in their aircraft, meaning you can receive some airport charts right on your displays in the cockpit in some marketplace aircraft, such as the Honda Jet. Now, this is payware and you do pay a subscription, so again, it's not for everyone, but it is definitely worth it if you want to fly realistic airline routes following real world procedures. As close as possible anyway. If you want to fly VFR or aren't too bothered about paying then I would recommend the trusty little nav map. While it is not as glossy as Navigraph it allows you to flight plan seamlessly with VFR landmarks if you prefer and the best thing is as I said it's free. Now something that I seldom speak about in my videos is peripherals. Since Microsoft Flight Sim came out in 2020, there has been a fantastic explosion in the amount of Flight Sim hardware available. And if you have the money spare, because let's be honest it is expensive, then kitting out your Flight Sim can be a surefire way of getting close to that sought after feeling of flight. Now I have a link down below to all of the Flight Sim hardware I have been lucky enough to acquire over the years right down below and I have to say I am a suckler for Honeycomb. Of course ignoring some of the big brands there are some fantastic independent sellers out there who are making some more niche products so have a look on eBay, have a look on Etsy and have a look on Facebook Marketplace as well as the official Flight Sim vendors. I would recommend prioritising boosting your computer first, if that could do with an update, but if not, Flight Sim hardware is the way to go. Well, I think I've covered some good points there. If you started out simming, first off, welcome to what is a fantastic hobby. And number two, I hope I've helped you out in this video. If you've been here for a while, you probably know a bit more than me, so feel free to share your experiences and tips down below. On that note, the big question is, where are you flying next? As a little bonus, feel free to check out Flight Sim Dispatch. This is free software which gives you access to a massive array of commercial flights flown in real life, hopefully giving you some information and inspiration on where to fly next. You can filter on airline, aircraft type, destination, departure airport, etc, etc. It's a very easy bit of software to use. You can get it on a laptop, PC, whatever. So do check that one out. 
On that note, guys, we have very sadly reached the end of this video. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here with me today. So be sure to share your feedback down below and subscribe if you have enjoyed and like if you've been here before. I'll see you all around. Have a good one. Bye-bye.